Greetings, I am Rob Chapman, and welcome to my lesson all about modes, how to apply them. It's been about uh, um, years and years and years since I made my first video, all about the modes on the guitar, and I figured it was time to teach something. May as well, it's been a long time, let's do some teaching. So, to start with, I'm going to assume that uh, you can tune a guitar, you can play some basic blues, and that you've been playing for you know six, seven, eight months or whatever. You're past the, the initial playing stage. You're not a complete beginner. You are what I call an intermediate, somebody that can play guitar, get the chicks, drink the beers, play the rock, that kind of thing. You're having fun. Um, if you find this confusing, then it might be the wrong lesson for you. Don't worry, you'll get there in the end. Just watch it a few times or watch some others um, and let's take it from there. Now, there's an awful lot of complete bullshit spoken about modes that makes them sound really confusing. And my approach is a little bit unorthodox, a bit different. And so if you hear any differing terminology, that's probably what it is. Um, my, my approach is, is very linear. <clears throat> I take a look at the, the key or the chords and I apply my modes directly in relation to the rules that they're giving me. But you need to learn those rules and you need to learn uh, the absolute basics of how to work out what mode you can play in to then play that mode. So how do I do that? Well, I do something called the jigsaw puzzle method. Now, I just called it the jigsaw puzzle method. Uh, no one else, I think, called it that. It's probably got some fancy name. But I worked out that, and I'm talking specifically about the diatonic major modes here. Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixed Lydian, Aeolian, and Locrian, or if you want to call them one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, might be a bit easier for you. Um, basically, I worked out that since they're all based upon a pattern of intervallics or steps in notes, uh, which just goes tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone, or in other words, kind of a major scale. So. <laughs> That's, uh, that was two octaves, actually, and I should probably turn down a little bit because that was crazy loud in my room. Uh, let me do that again in the key of C for you. I'm using C as an example because C has no sharps or flats. Um, it is just notes. Just go C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, e, etc. So here is a C major scale for you. Hopefully B cam can catch that. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now you can build a chord from each of these notes and create a scale of chords that we in the industry call a chord scale. And you can play that lots and lots and lots of different ways. And this lesson really isn't about that because there are so many great teachers out there teaching chord scaling, but you could do it with triad. Or you could do it with, um, you know, full fat, full fat six string major chords, etc. And what those chord scales taught me was that each of these chords, if you take them all together and look at them, that's what we call a key. And when you're writing music, you can take any of these chords and combine them and you're, you're playing a song. So for example, if I take the, um, the two, so here's the one. This is an E major, so one chord, two chord, three chord, four chord, five chord. Let's just go there. So we could go, um, we could go five, two, uh, three. So. But it feels like it needs to go somewhere else, yeah? Ah, that's better, isn't it? And you can have fun mixing and matching these chords until you end up with songs. But rather than just playing the chords, you could play a riff. So you could play notes from the chord um, I'll take that a bit further in a minute, and you could write a riff, so for example, this F minor chord. You can just use the notes and create licks and phrases and riffs, bolt them together, you got a tune. Anyway, stay on target. Um, 
That was a quote from Star Wars, the real Star Wars from the Holy Trinity, not the mockery of a pantheon of ass, which was a bit akin to taking a shit next to a Christmas dinner that came out previously. And <laughs> although I'm really looking forward to the new Star Wars because it looks like it's going to be a real one. Um, how do you know where you are and which mode you can play? That's the question that you're asking me. So, well, it follows a pattern. Major, minor, minor, major, major, uh, minor, half diminished, and back to the root. That, that is, if we go, for example, from one. Uh, let's do this in triads. Uh, maybe I'll show you the triad uh, chord scale, just using like a D shape, because it's nice and easy. So here's chord one. As you can see, it's a D major shape. Um, but shape very soon is not going to mean a lot, really. It's going to be the intervals inside and the roots we choose that make a bigger difference. But this is, a, this is a D chord. Here's our D note. There's our major third. There's D major. So if we go up D sharp E and play this shape, this is a minor shape, you get E minor. So take it up a tone, F, F sharp minor, G major. Now you get the idea, yeah? So we get one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is a half diminished or minus seven flat five, and then octave. Uh, you could use that for writing cool African star music, which is fun. Um, but really, what you want to do is focus on the patterns that are there. Major, minor, minor, major. So you've got major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, half diminished, major. Each one kind of represents a mode. The very first chord represents the major scale, or we call it the Ionian mode. Ionian. These are all Greek names, by the way. The second one, although this is a, a minor chord, and it does represent a minor mode, there is a major flavour to it. This is Dorian. The next one is Phrygian, which again is a minor mode. And then you get Lydian, which is a major mode, kind of evil major. And then you get Mixo-Lydian, which again is a major sounding mode with a flat seventh. This is the minor scale. This is Aeolian. And then you get Locrian. Uh, this is minus seven flat five, evil, horrible sounding. Uh, and then you get the octave of your original thing. Now then, say for example, someone throws at you a couple of chords at a jam and they go, dude, chappers, play some mode now. And you go, okay, what are the chords? And they go, ah. Uh, And I go, that's the worst chord progression I've ever heard in my entire life. Get out of my band. Um, but let's take a look at those two chords. You've got a major chord. We've got two steps. We've got a minor chord. Now, where in that pattern does that occur? It happens at the very beginning. One to the two. So, so far, my deductive chapper's mind is saying it could be um, that what they're playing is the first and second chords of a chord progression which sit inside D major. Light bulb goes on. But let's see if it occurs anywhere else. Major going up a tone to a minor. So the next one goes to a minor, no. Next one goes up to a major, no. Major to a minor, yes. So it happens twice. It happens at five and six, and it happens at one and two. I don't have enough information to know whether or not I am playing in the key of D major, uh, although obviously these are both contained within D major, playing the one to the two, or whether instead they're playing the five to the six and I should be focusing kind of a more of a minor sound. So I would need a third chord. That third chord would tell me, because if they go up a tone and they play minor seven flat five, I know that they're here in this chord progression playing these kinds of chords. If instead they go major, minor, minor, I know it's focused around here. That doesn't tell you which mode to use. That tells you the key. So if they give me, for example, two minor chords a tone apart, uh, so we go, well that only happens, 
only happens in this pattern, the diatonic major pattern, at two and three. So if that's two and three, that has to be one. That reminded me an awful lot of a quote from a movie called From Dusk Till Dawn. There has to be a guard with vampires. Um, so if you, if you ever find two minor chords a tone apart, chances are, it's never always certain because people write music that is non-modal as well, chances are it's a two and a three, and therefore that's the key, or what we call the parent major, which means this is the beginning of this key, but the focal point might be different. And the focal point is what is what I use, you don't have to, to choose your mode. So let's give you another example. Somebody says, Rob, we're playing these two chords and they're minor and minor, so. And the chord progression goes. Really boring. But what's happening? It's just going between two chords, both of them minor, both of them have to be positions two and three of a diatonic major modal key, and they're in D, D uh, Ionian. This is the Dorian chord, this is the Phrygian chord. Where is it resolving to? It's going Dorian, Phrygian. It kind of feels like it resolves on the Dorian. Not a great deal, because it's a shit chord progression, but it does at least resolve on that Dorian. So in that particular instance, I would take those two chords, I would shove them up the rhythm guitar player's ass, but I would also play E Dorian over them. This is what it resolves to. And we know that this is the second chord of that diatonic progression, major, minor, Ionian, Dorian. So E Dorian would fit over that chord progression. and it would totally, totally work. Now I'm mixing in some bluesy notes because I combine my Dorian with another scale, which is the blue scale to make it sound a bit more interesting. Let me show you, since we've worked out that this would be in Dorian, a Dorian scale shape. There are two kinds, lots of different kinds of modal scale shape. There is what some people call the seven scale method, and there is what some people call the five scale method. There are lots of different stupid methods. Really, you can use any scale shape you want to play them, but let me show you a Dorian scale shape that you can use. And we'll start on the 12th fret to make this easy for people that know that that's an E. Hopefully Bcam will collect this data for you visually in an interesting way. So we're starting on the E. We're gonna go up two frets and play the two note. Minor third because of course it's a minor chord. Fourth, fifth, major sixth, flat seven, octave. That's the whole mode, you just repeat it a second octave. Let me show you again, nice and slow. That's, in a nutshell, how I do it. I use clues from the chords to work out where in the diatonic pattern I sit. I then take that diatonic pattern of chords and go, where is it resolving? And where it resolves to, I use that mode. Let's take another example. <laughs> I had to get that out of my system, I'm sorry. Okay, let's do the same thing, this time in the key of A, just to be different and because it's fun to go A, and uh, <laughs> let's give you the uh, another chord scale, uh, although I wasn't gonna do it, but whatever. So um, this time, nice, different, interesting chords. Here's an A major. Of course you could do that if you want. Do, you could do sevens, doesn't matter, but just major. Next chord is a two, it's a minor, representing Dorian, representing Phrygian, representing Lydian. So here's an interesting way of playing a Lydian chord. Be careful! 
So we've got root, flat five. You then want this, uh, this one, which is your seven, and then third. So these two on the same fret, and these two either side. Interesting way of playing. You just play a major chord if you want. So up to the Mixolydian chord. And this is a dominant chord, so it's got a flat seventh, but it's a major chord. Here's the shape. Up a tone to minor, Aeolian. Just a regular minor chord. Now along a tone, we're going to be playing minor seven flat five, or a little four string version. So this is root, flat seven, flat five. Nasty note. <laughs> Never do that. And then to the octave. So there's your chord scale. As long as you've got that basic information in your mind, just when you're practicing this just for the four and five, you're welcome just to play major chords. Um, as long as you realize that Lydian has a sharp four, uh, flat five, sharp four. It's a sharp four technically, but I've always said flat five and that Mixolydian is a flat seven, then you're good to go. So here's how it would look in normal everyday major minor chords with the minor seven flat five. Oh. Let me tune. So here it is with normal everyday uh, boring major minor chords apart from the minor seven flat five. One, Ionian. Two, Dorian. Three, Phrygian. Four, Lydian. Notice that they're only a semitone between each other. Five, Mixolydian. Six, Aeolian. Seven, Locrian. And then that's it, you, you come back to that. the octave. Plot twist! Dude in your jam room suddenly gets increasingly better at playing the guitar and throws three chords at you, all of which were better than the previous two. And the chords are these. That sounds like something you probably know. play? What are they? What do they fit into? Well, let's take a look. This is a minor chord. If I go back two tones, I'm playing a major chord. If I go forward a tone, I'm playing a major chord. Where in our diatonic pattern do you find two major chords a tone apart? The only place is four and five. The only place. So they have to be four and five of a progression, and it goes up to a minor. The only place you get major, major, and a minor, all of them a tone apart, is four, five, and six. So it has to be six, five, four, yeah? And that means that it has to be A. The, the parent, uh, the beginning of the universe of this is A major. Where does it resolve to? Quite clearly here. It's a major chord. Um, we've worked out the diatonic parent major and we therefore know this is a five you have to know the order of the modes in order to work this out quickly on the fly or look at the intervallics or have some kind of nick johnson sixth sense so the order of the modes are ionian dorian phrygian lydian mixolydian aeolian and locrian but it's much easier to memorize them just one two three four five six seven and know the intervallics within each one i know it's the five mode so the five mode is Mixolydian. Or the way I think about it is it's a major mode but with a flat seven. So it has to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It doesn't go. That's major. It has to go. Mixolydian. Mixolydian in E. So let me teach you a Mixolydian scale in the key of E. Here's an E again. Let me show you my favorite Mixolydian scale shape that you can all have now for free because I'm feeling better today. So root, two, I'm using my little finger there. Major third, fourth, fifth, sixth, flat seven, 
octave. That's the whole mode, we just repeat it. I'll do that again for you slowly, sorry. It's a dominant mode. It's got a flat seven, but it's major. So you could whack that all over that progression. And it would sound completely appropriate and totally, totally fit. I think that's enough modal knowledge for you guys. Please absorb, practice, work really hard. It's gonna make a big difference to your playing if you learn this. Thank you for being subscribed and liking this and being lovely people. Take it easy. Chappers. Out.